I wanted to go over um, just the installation of something that we've been using to protect our inverter boards. So inverter boards are potentially more um, sensitive to power issues and can cause damage and we've all had to replace boards in areas where there was dirty power, a lot of surges, whatever it is. In our market there is a lot of high voltage, like sustained high voltage. Um, we will have our 230 actually be more like 247, between 247 and 255. And we'll have those swings throughout the day of voltage. And a lot of times the inverter boards, they're not actually getting damaged by a power surge, by something that happens fast, but it actually sustained higher voltage. Um, so if you look at our panel, we're actually rated, uh, this board inverter board is rated uh, for a minimum voltage of 197 and a maximum voltage of 153. And so we found that we are actually going over 153 pretty common. So uh, we have been using a buck and boost transformer and that's all this is right here. It's extremely heavy but it's a transformer and depending upon how you wire it in you can either boost your voltage up or drop it down. Um, so this is something that has we've been installing for years now on all, any equipment that we're using an inverter board and It's helped with communication errors. It's helped with board failure. It's helped with a lot of different things um, another thing about the transformer is that Which is something you know didn't even cross our mind when we were first getting it, but you actually kind of are cleaning up your power a bit coming through the transformer. Um, some of the um, things that can happen with power, um, just dirty stuff coming off the grid, uh, is not going to be, uh, it's not going to pass through the transformer in the same way. So it's actually, it cleans up power a little bit passing through that transformer, which is cool. Um, so I'm just going to go over quickly installing this and making sure we get it right so it comes with the installation catalog and you open that up and you match the type of uh, buck and boost model that you have to the catalog and then how much voltage drop you have incoming voltage and then how much voltage drop we're bucking the voltage instead of boosting it uh, so you find out how much voltage drop you have and then they'll give you different wire diagrams in order to get that voltage drop so um, let's get started. This thing is heavy. I've done the hard part of lining up the screws right already. So that's, uh, that's the good news there. I don't actually have to do that. Every time people see me using a Ryobi, they laugh. But it's been 10 years. Uh, yeah. They still serve me good. They do what they need to do. Exactly. had a few fail yeah. over the years. But. Well, as a service tech, I don't actually put enough strain on them that yeah. I would need something heavier that yeah. could do a little. Like, a, apparently, Milwaukee makes Ryobi stuff, but they're mm -hmm. just heavier and... That's the cheaper stuff. Yeah. Okay. Heavier and stronger. I guess I will use the meter after... I'm gonna make sure that power is in fact off. That's kind of important. I mean, you see that I've done this already because the wires are out. Safety check to ground. Double checking power is off before I touch anything. So I have my line in and my load out. On the buck and boost um, wire diagram, it'll, it'll have high low instead of labeling it as line load it'll have high low so your high voltage in and then after it's been bucked to a lower voltage it's your low side okay I have the wire diagram the install manual pulled up on my phone so uh, that's what I'm using as my reference to make sure I got this installed right uh, first thing all of your wires are labeled X1, 2, 3 through 4. 
and then we have our H1, H2, H3, H4. And depending on the combo is how, how much you buck or boost, or rather you're actually bucking or boosting. Going to your transformer. And that's, any transformer is just that way. You, you come in one direction, you're transforming the voltage down, you're bringing it down. You come in the other side, you're uh, boosting it the voltage up. Same transformer. Take any of your transformer, turn it around, hook it up, and your voltage will be uh, increased instead of decreased. So first thing, let's get ground tied together. This is my low voltage, high voltage load line. First thing, I'm going to take one of my high voltage lines and connect it to the low voltage going through with H4. So this leg of power, this side, just goes straight through to the equipment. So we're only um, boost, uh, bucking, we're only dropping the other leg. That is H4. Okay. Then we have in H3 and H2. Oh yeah, so I didn't mention it before, but I'm dropping it um, around 15 volts that I want it dropped. And if I get proved wrong at the end of the video that I'm not actually dropping it around 15 volts, we're going to have to change that and just cut it out because no one can see me being wrong on camera. Techs aren't actually ever wrong. That'd be unrealistic. <laughs> we don't want to be vulnerable. People might learn. <laughs> Brian said that was a good change he made at some point, realizing that it was actually better if he showed his mistakes. People gave him feedback. That's when everyone learns. Okay, now I'm going to find uh, my other one of these is my load and line, one of them is my high voltage, low voltage. So I'm going to look at which one's connected to here going to my equipment. So that's my low or my load. And to my low I have X2, X4, and H1. So we have H1, X4, and X2 that is hiding. Right here. So this one has four wires. And you may have to strip these. I already did that before the video, but you may have to strip them back a bit um, to get them to connect. Solid. Nobody's going anywhere. Right. which leaves my other high voltage or line with X1 and X3. X1 and X3, that's all I have left, that's good. Cool, it's about as simple as that. I have a access panel that I can put on close up, but first I'm going to test my voltage in and out make sure we've actually done the job we're supposed to do. So are you able to see that? Mm -hmm. Alright, voltage on. Alright, so I have 245 coming in and then coming out of the buck and boost. 227 coming out of the buck and boost. So that is more like, um, wait, I can do this. It's more like 17 volts. Great. We've successfully brought our voltage down. And now there will be some swings where this will go down lower than the 245 that it is now, but we're not going to hit our minimum 
the 190, uh, 197 very commonly at all. I mean, that would be some major power fluctuations, and we don't typically see that. But we do see it go up and hang out in the 250 range um, pretty commonly in our area. So this is going to keep power coming into our unit in a safe uh, level for the board to function the way it's supposed to. It's not going to overheat. It's not going to have as many communication issues. Um, and we're not going to have boards blowing all the time like we did before. So there's your uh, buck and boost install. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.